Lent is an arrow shot from a bow, which sails on a long 40-day arc to Easter. When the arrow lands, we will hear these words, Jesus died for you. And anyone among us who is honest will tell you that they wonder, what does that mean, Jesus died for me? For some it means that you <laughs> are a terrible sinner, have been from the start. And instead of killing you as punishment for your terribleness and your sins, God has allowed Jesus to die as a substitute. For some, that is what it means, Jesus died for you. And for many, that will be enough of an explanation, and they will go merrily on their way. Having won what we might refer to as something of a salvation lottery, but for others of us, that explanation will never quite hold water. And try as we might, we'll never be able to make that work. I'm awful. God should have killed me, killed his son instead. Is this a place where we can be honest? For a great many of us, We'll never quite be able to make that work in our minds and our hearts. But we know something. It's not as if we're throwing out the cross. It's not as if we're throwing out Christianity and the tradition. We know that there's power. We can feel it. Power in the life and death of Jesus. We know thin moments in which we feel that power dare I say it, in our bodies. Like, a, like, a, like an electricity that we know is salvific. It saves us somehow. But how? It's okay to ask the question, how? It's okay to say that one theory doesn't quite work for me. What else is there? Let's get into it. The arc of Jesus' life, hmm? the arc of Jesus' life, his teaching, and finally his death on the cross. Well, perhaps what it does is that it shows us definitively that love pierces. Like with a surgeon's knife, cuts through, pierces, and sails through all hardship, suffering, violence, and even death itself. And the thing about Jesus' death that saves us is that it shows. Hmm? It shows us, and check this out, it shows death and suffering themselves that love in the end will not be diminished or canceled out. Indeed, love will win. So the divine indwelling of Christ within our bodies. Can we say that? I don't want that to sound like preachery, because that's real. It's a little bit of language, but it's real. Let me say it again. The divine indwelling of the Christ within our bodies. That's a real thing in your body right now. Like right this second. Like touch your body. Christ indwells you, and it gives you power. Hmm? This is how it saves. It gives you power, real power, to live out love's long arc, amen, in your own lives. And this is not transactional. Believe this, get into heaven. It is transformative. Let this love change you, amen? So the love of Jesus, it's okay to believe this. The love of Jesus is not simply a ticket into heaven. Rather, love changes the way we live our lives and propels us to live through death. Did you follow that? 
propels us to live through death. Does that sound like salvation? Somebody said, put it on the street. Okay. So years ago, I had a friend who was the busiest busybody the church had ever known. <laughs> Did you catch that? Father John, she was the busiest busybody the church had ever known. She was in the middle of everything. I loved her. I loved the way she lived her life. I loved her busybody nature. She came to see me one day in my office, and she said, I'm going to cut right to it, Father Hendry. I said, all right, let's do it, baby. She said, I'm 62 years old, and I have a bad heart. Always have. I was born with it. Nothing I can do about it. Nothing the doctors can do about it either. We've tried everything. I do all I can for my family, the church, and Jesus because life is short. And one day soon, my heart's going to stop flat out all of a sudden. Just going to be done. That's just how it is. That's what she hit me with. Trying to be a good priest. I opened my mouth to speak word of consolation. She stopped me dead in my tracks. Didn't even get a word out. She said, you're sweet, but don't bother. <laughs> it's okay, she said. We've got work to do for love. Now, ever since you've been here, all you talk about is the love of Jesus, and I want you to know I'm all in. So when you see me moving around and into everything, that's why. I don't have much time, so i got to get after it. I swear to you, that's what she said to me. This was down in McMinn County in East Tennessee. She was a dairy farmer. She knew all about hard work. You can tell she was also a pragmatist, right? Farmers have to be. She worked hard for the cause of the gospel for several more years. We worked together. And then I got a call. She wasn't, she wasn't messing around with me that day. She'd tell me what was going to happen. I got a call that she'd been taken to the hospital and it was bad, and could I come as soon as possible? And I went directly to her, and when I walked into the room, she smiled at me, tears in her eyes. She said, oh, we've done so much for love. That's what she said. And I got in real close to her there in the hospital room, knelt by her bed, put my head close to hers, and she talked for a few minutes through her labored breathing. And every other word, I promise you, was love, love, love. And she didn't complain. Huh? She's a young woman, really. She didn't complain. She didn't utter a single word of regret. She didn't ask a single question. She didn't have a resentful, resentful cell in her body. She was radiant on her deathbed. She wept, and somehow, I promise you this is true, her tears bore peace into that room. And her last words, before breathing her last, were, we have opened so many doors for love. Keep opening doors for love, Hendry. Keep opening doors for love. And then she was gone. Jesus did not resist suffering. Jesus did not resist violence. Jesus did not resent or grasp or fight back. He saved us by showing us the narrow passageway through suffering and injustice through which we can sail on the wings of love. And that is how his death, when they say he died for you, that is how his death saves us. His love transformed my friend. It didn't punch her ticket. It transformed her. And she slipped through, didn't she? Every word of that story is true. Can you feel it? Can you see it? Can you hear it? She slipped through the threshold called death on the very wings of love that Jesus the Christ had fitted her with. <laughs> Do you know you can be fitted with wings of love? That Jesus had fitted her with years before. Did she fit me with mine that day? Keep opening doors for love. Eddie Hillison was walking across Westerbork concentration camp, soon to die at the hands of the Nazis. 
It had been raining for days in the concentration camp. It was a miserable scene in every way. And Eddie, walking across the camp, she said this. She said, oh, the mud. There is so much mud. Everywhere there is mud. Somewhere. Between your ribs. You must have a great deal of inner sunshine in order not to become a victim of it all. Later, Eddie wrote, So much of life is hard to bear. Yet whenever I showed myself ready to bear it, the hard was directly transformed into the what? The beautiful. Can you see how the love of God is transformational? Jesus saves us by planting within us an inner sunshine. And this inner sunshine, as Eddie says, is his very presence dwelling within us as a life source that sustains us in the midst of suffering. I don't want you to hear that as some poetic preacherly thing you think I'm supposed to say because I'm a priest. I want you to hear that as an ontological truth, as the actual truth about your actual body this moment. Now, some people have accused me. Can you imagine people accusing me? <laughs> some people have accused me of peddling a doormat theology. Oh, Hendry, you're saying we should all just be nonviolent doormats. Stop it. That is not what I am saying. That couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, while Eddie was accepting her fate in that concentration camp, and loving her way through it, what was happening, huh? The allies were racing to her rescue. They didn't make it in time for her. But they did liberate many, many, many people from those terrible camps. So the cross and the nonviolent love of Jesus are not invitations to lie down in traffic and accept injustice. Amen? My grandfather, and yours too, I know it, fought in World War II, and that was exactly the right thing to do. My friend whose deathbed story I told tried every medical intervention available, and that was exactly the right thing to do. What's missing often from the sort of toolbox of human behaviors is that at the same time that we're pushing back against death with all that we've got, hmm? our Jesus teaches us to also fully accept the inevitability of it. And that's possible. That full depth of acceptance is possible because we know that the love of Jesus will save us by preventing death from having the final word. See, the long arc of love saves us by charting a course through suffering into eternal life. The cross of Christ saves us by claiming us for love. It simply will not let death have us. And here's the fun part. Huh? Here's the fun part. Once we've been claimed by love, our only job is opening doors. That's what she said when she fitted me <laughs> with my wings. Keep opening doors for love. And that is what we mean when we say, Jesus died for you. Amen.